you're not alone. If you need someone to talk to today, please contact Crisis Services Canada by either calling them at 1-833-456-4566 all hours of the day, or you can text them at 45645 at 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember, you're not alone and Crisis Services Canada is here to help. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's edition of Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. I'm your host, Graham Forsyth. Coffee with Graham is brought to you by AETI, Case Financial Group, Evolve Green, Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, as well as Tovey Hockey. So last show of the week, it's going to be a good one. I'm going to be having three people on tonight's show, and starting off tonight's show as the first guest is Ferdy Nelson to talk about the upcoming West Regional Best of Three series to decide who goes to the ESO Cup between the Saskatchewan female U18 AAA Hockey League champs and the Notre Dame Hounds, as well as the Manitoba female U18 AAA Hockey League champs and the Westman Wildcats. That series kicks off tomorrow. Ferdy will be joining the show after the intro to talk about both those teams, their keys to the series, and what they'll need to do to win, all that good stuff. So sit back, ladies and gentlemen, relax, enjoy tonight's edition of Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions with this first guest. Ferdy Nelson here to talk about the West Regional best of three series to see who goes to the ESO Cup from Manitoba or Saskatchewan here on Coffee with Graham on ASTV. There he is, Ferdy Nelson, on this Thursday night edition of Coffee with Graham. Joining the show here to talk about the West Regional Best of Three series, the series that will decide who goes to the ESO Cup between the Notre Dame Hounds and the Westman Wildcats. Ferdy, we're, a, uh, we're an evil way, a night away from this happening. I mean, the excitement must be huge surrounding not only the MFHL, the fans of that league, as well as the Saskatchewan female U18 AAA Hockey League. Well, I would think so, especially after two years of of this not occurring, right? I mean, um, I'm sure everybody's geared up and ready to go. I, I'm sure the Hartney community rink will be packed tomorrow night. Uh, hopefully we don't, uh, the weather doesn't play a factor here because it sounds like another Colorado, Colorado low coming in, but uh, but it sounds more like rain than snow. So I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be a packed house tomorrow night. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be some Notre Dame fans there as well. So I, I, I'm assuming the is I'm I'm expecting that'll be an electric atmosphere. Yeah, and I mean two good teams going at it. I mean Westman Wildcats finishing third place in the MFHL, going nine and one in the postseason to win the championship. And for Notre Dame, they were twenty four two two and two in their regular season, going five oh one two in the playoffs to win the championship there. And for uh, you know just in terms of playing in Hartney for these two teams, you gotta think that. Westman would would have a huge advantage there, just knowing having the familiarity of Planet Hardy. Oh, absolutely! They're going to know the rink a lot better than Notre Dame will. They'll know the nuances of the corners, the boards. You know, it's a little bit different. I think it's, it might be a little bit uh, different uh, setup with size uh, compared to Notre Dame's ice surface. So, uh, you know, you're hoping that your home crowd and your home rink gives you an advantage. And I, I think in Hartney it will, um, you know, the, the Hartney community rink actually stayed open so that this could occur. Otherwise uh, they would have had to find another place to play. Some of these rinks in rural Manitoba don't stay out open that long and uh, they cats and, uh, and that's probably a big part of why they did it. You know, you want to be, you've played in that rink all, all year. You've practiced in that, that rink all year. You know, everything about it. And it's a comfort zone, right? You feel comfortable. So I think that's a huge advantage to Hartney, uh, to, to play in Hartney for the Wildcats. You know, it's been a while since these two teams have played. Obviously, both of them will be uh, excited, ready to go, and it will be yeah. most likely a very intense series. But what should we be expecting with this amount of time off that these teams have had going into that first game? Do you think that we could be seeing maybe a bit of sloppy play to start things off in tomorrow night's game? Well, I, I, I'm not sure that the sloppy play will come from 
necessarily time off or just the excitement of stepping on the ice and the nerves. Right. Right. Uh, I think whoever gathers themselves the quickest and gets to their game, um, it's going to be a benefit. Uh, we can talk about five, six, seven, eight, nine days off, or you can talk about the fact that uh, probably not one of these players <laughs> until they played the playoffs this year, played a meaningful game in the last two years, you know, of importance. Now, now you're in a situation where you've all of a sudden your whole season's on the line. So I think it'll be more than just uh, a week off. I think uh, they're going to come out there and they're going to have to learn to control their, their energy level. Well, you can call it nerves, energy, anticipation, excitement, whatever you call it. Um, whoever gets control of that and gets to their game and, uh, and executes will, will obviously have an advantage. Um, and I, you know, after the first shift for every player, usually those kind of things settle down, right? Yeah. Um, you hope. Yeah. And you brought up something, how, uh, not any of like uh, almost all of these players that played in the playoffs for their respective teams, whether they were Notre Dame or Westman players haven't had that experience playing in the playoffs for this stage. Now in the season, uh, neither of these teams have had experience playing in a moment like this, except for head coach guy Williams, who, who's had an opportunity to uh, coach Westman in an SO cup qualifying series before. Do you think that with guy having that experience of coaching in moments, like this even though he didn't have the most success back then when doing it would, would give Westman maybe a, a bit of an advantage there well you you know guy who's the kind of a coach that learns from every experience he goes through whether it be on the winning or losing side and sometimes you'll learn more from losses than you do wins uh, so I think I think that will help him in his preparation on how to prepare the team for this um, you've gone through it once you know what 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 you did then, and whether it worked or didn't work. Um, so I can't I can't believe that it's not a benefit to guy with the as experienced the coach as he is that this won't be of some benefit to him preparing the Wildcats for this series. Well, let's dive into the teams now. Starting off with the Notre Dame Hounds, uh, only fair because they are the uh, favorite coming in based off the record. Um, unbelievable season for them. 114 yeah. goals for in the regular season, which ranks second in the league for them. 22 in the playoffs scored. Uh, 42 goals against, which was the, the least given up in the Saskatchewan League for them in the uh, regular season. 14 goals against given up in the playoffs. Uh, in terms of the offense, we, we know their big gun is Ryan Parrott, but this is a team that's very balanced up front. A, a team that has a lot of different lines that can beat you in, in different ways. Uh, what should we be expecting though from a, a big gun like Ryan Parrott and the rest of the the big players for Notre Dame in the series well I actually you know I've, I've had a chance to watch a little bit of uh some some video clips and and some um games over the over the winter not a lot uh of them playing the you know at the Notre Dame event uh they it all starts in their own end for them they are a really solid defensive team and they build off of that defense to get the offense they get, but they don't make many mistakes in the defensive zone. They don't turn over the puck a lot. Um, and that's why they were successful in the playoffs. You know, 22 goals in the playoffs isn't an exorbitant amount. When you look at the fact that the Wildcats, I think they had 35 or 36 in 10 games, they had 22 and eight. So they're, they're not winning because they necessarily pump a lot of pucks in the net. Uh, but they but they keep a lot of pucks out of the, they keep the puck out of their net and they and you, you make mistakes they turn it around on you so I don't see them doing a whole lot different I think they'll play a strong structured defensive game they'll make it hard for the Wildcats to get to the net they won't give up many shots from the scoring zone which I noticed they they protect their their D zone very well and then they'll they'll work off of turnovers and breakouts and see what they can get up the ice yeah, and the reason they played less games than Westman was because Notre Dame ended up getting the first round bye right. to uh, punch their ticket to the semifinals when they played the Saskatoon Stars, of course, defeated them and defeated the Rebels in the finals. But in terms of this Westman team uh, against this Notre Dame team, I guess in terms of Notre Dame playing against Westman, you've always talked about how this Westman team has a lot of speed. How do you think yeah. that this Notre Dame team will be looking to handle that balanced attack and that speedy attack of the Westman? Wildcats. 
Well, and that's a, if you look at the the Wildcats during the playoffs here, they were getting, you know, they had, oh, I think it is seven, eight players that had at least six points or more, um, you know, so um, they, they have been balanced. They've been getting some offense from their back end. They like to use their speed. They like to get the game going up and down the ice. Uh, and if they can do that, uh, they'll be successful, um, you know, with, with Rice and, Franklin and Anderson, Beard, Koloski, all those players up front, they've got a whole lot of team speed. It's not based off of one line, and they're going to have to generate and keep it going like they are right now. Balanced attack, keep the speed going, you know, keep the pace of the game up. Uh, you do that by, you know, regulating the length of your shifts, making sure you're fresh, uh, because the one thing they're going to be up against is a, is an older group of players here. Uh, you know, and people say, well, yeah, they're all U18s. Yeah, but there's a difference between a 15-year-old and an 18-year-old. Um, uh, if you've coached in, at this level like I have or scouted it like I have, you understand that uh, uh, a third-year player can can gain a lot over three years com compared to somebody coming in for their first year. And so that, that could be a big factor in this series, actually, when I look at it, because uh, Notre Dame has 10 graduating players on their roster. Uh, Westman has three. <laughs> Westman has a pile of U, uh, two U15 players and a bunch of first years. I, I'm not sure that Notre Dame has but two first year players. The rest of their players are saying, so experience wise and strength wise, they may have an advantage that way. Um, but speed, speed doesn't play into that. If you're fast, you're fast. If you're skilled, you're skilled. And the Wildcats have got to get to that point in their game. They, they like I've said it. You're right. I've said it all year. I personally think they're the fastest team in the in the uh, Manitoba female midget or U18 league. Uh, my old stuff, old terminology is coming out there. Um, they, they've got speed up front. They, they really do. Uh, and and uh, if they, if it gets going up and down the ice, I think that plays into their game. We'll go back to uh, Notre Dame, as mentioned. Uh, like you said, a, a team that, you know, generates their their attack, their momentum off of their strong defensive play. Looking up front, uh, Ryan Parrott was phenomenal for this team all season long. You got players like Kyra Anderson as well, yeah. who ended up scoring the, I guess, the, the championship goal, as they call it, in the uh, finals in the game four against Regina. I mean, there, there's McKibben as well. There's so many good players on this team. Uh, you know, talk about the the X factors up front there for the Notre Dame Hounds in this series up front. Well, you know, you just mentioned that, that their three top scorers in the regular season were still producing in the playoffs, and and that just shows the quality of their of the player. I mean, they they're what makes this team go up front, and uh, and they have skill. I've watched them; they're great with the puck. They they cycle the puck well. They, they they play a 200 foot game. Um, they they this this team is well coached. The 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 stuff I've watched, uh, they do all they do a lot of the little things very well, uh, which goes to you know maybe being a little bit more experienced too. They they don't end up on the wrong side of the puck a lot of times. They make it very difficult for teams to to attack them. So and and part of that is the fact that their skilled players buy into that. They're not all about offense. But when they do get the chance, these players know how to put the puck in the net, right? I mean, they only had one player in the top five in the league. Regina had like four or five players in the top five scoring in that league. But, but you know, Notre Dame's balanced. And we've talked about that, how important that is um, to team success, that you're not trying to generate all your offense off of, you know, one or two players. Um, and Notre Dame is is built that way. They're, they're built to, to roll their lines against you. And uh, when I was watching the, the playoffs, the last game against uh, Regina, I saw that they were, they were sort of rolling their lines, you know, they uh, do their best players, maybe get a little bit more penalty kill or power play. Yeah. That's part of the, that's part of coaching. But uh, I really think that uh, Westman's going to have to watch those three that you mentioned in particular, they are the straw that stirs the drink. And uh, so if, if they let them get going, they'll be in trouble. 
well, uh, someone that is going to be responsible for that potentially might not happen for their big guns to get going on Notre Dame is Grace Glover, playoff yeah. MVP in the MFHL. We all know the story about how good Grace was in these playoffs and how big of a part, big of a factor, how big of a factor she was in Westman's championship run. She'll have to come up big again, you'd have to think. I mean, what you think has to be done here for Grace Glover for this uh, Westman Wildcats team to, to have the X factor there in that? Well, I, I like the way she – when I was watching the games, I did get to watch Grace in the playoffs. I, I was liking the way she was um, challenging coming out of her net. Um, she had good rebound control. Um, she wasn't, uh, you know, like you, when Grace gets into trouble, I think she backs into the net a little too much. And when she's aggressive, because she's she's athletic, um, she's challenging these shooters, uh, and she did that uh, in in the playoff, especially against Winnipeg Ice. Uh, she didn't give them many second opportunities, um, and and the, her defense was in good in front of her. It was her team was good in front of her. They didn't let a lot of second and third opportunities happen as well. So if if Grace can see it, she's going to make that first save, and a big part of it is going to be for the Wildcats to make sure that she can see the puck and that they're not giving this Notre Dame team that I, I've i seen in some, some of these clips. They, they go to the net hard. Like, this is this is an aggressive team. Saskatchewan plays an aggressive in their league, an aggressive style of hockey, and they're physical. And if they, if they can get to the net and create problems like that, uh, again, I think the Wildcats will be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, and like you mentioned, this Notre Dame Hounds team with 10 graduating players compared to the Wildcats, three, so might have a bit more experience there, of course, uh, a team that goes hard to the net, like you said. And yeah, for Westman, it's it's going to be interesting to see how they'll be able to handle the attack of Notre Dame and how Grace Glover is going to come out and play. Will she keep up her confidence like she had in the regular season and in the playoffs? Well, we'll have to wait and see. But before we let you go here, Ferdy, you know, I, I don't want to do this, but I, I think it's necessary here. Uh, let's, uh, let's get your prediction. Who, who takes this best of three series, this West Regional? Uh, well, I, I can't I can't go to Hartney and predict Notre Dame to win. <laughs> They're not going to let me in the rink. No. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying that the Wildcats are going to win in three. I'm calling for an upset. Oh, there you go. Well, the, the folks. Well, I, I basically have to stay loyal, right? Yeah, I basically okay. have to stay yeah. loyal. I, I really, I like the Wildcats. I like them a lot. I don't say this um, just to say it. I, I think the skill set and the speed this team has, if they can get to their game and play that up and down fast paced game. Um, I haven't seen many defense cores this year that, that haven't had some trouble handling the speed of the Wildcats. Um, that being said, this is we you know they, we haven't seen Notre Dame a lot, and obviously a team that goes twenty four two and two uh, in their regular season in a very tough league probably doesn't have a whole lot of weaknesses. So yeah. the Wildcats are up, you know their work is there in front of them, and it's going to not be an easy road. But uh, I think if they can get to their game, uh, utilizing the speed and the skill, uh, they have a chance. Well, there's a uh, potential for this series to go the distance. Of course, it's the best of three. First game going tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. in Hartney Community Center between the Westman Wildcats and Notre Dame Hounds. Game two goes on Saturday, two days from now at 5 p.m. And if it is tied at one apiece in the series after those two games, game number three with a chance for an opportunity to go to the ESO Cup on the line uh, this Sunday at 2 p.m. Uh, Ferdy Nelson. Thanks for taking the time, as always, for well, the show. And thanks talk for having me. Uh, thanks for having me again, Graham. I appreciate all you guys do for promoting this and, and amateur sports and especially female hockey. Of course. So it was great to have you on to talk about the West Regional between the Westman Wildcats and Notre Dame Hounds. And I'm sure we'll have you on the show here in the uh, next week to talk about it once uh, that series concludes. But until then, Ferdy, you take care, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks. I cut Ferdy off there by accident. He was wishing me a good night. I wish Ferdy a good night as well as he uh, signs off here.
on this Thursday night. Uh, we got some more coverage coming up for you guys here on the show. Some more interviews coming up next. I'm going to be speaking to a guest that's been on the show before. She's made a pretty massive uh, life decision to go play for Midland University, uh, the Warriors, for the 2022-2023 season. It is defenseman of the Pilot Mound Hockey Academy Buffalo's female U18 prep academy program uh, her program in uh, defenseman to vanadu join the show next year on coffee with graham stick around for more after this commercial break folks welcome to pilot mount hockey academy your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential blackjack stewart arena Home of the Buffalo is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mount Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on-ice coaching propel our students to the next level, both mentally and physically, in a professional environment. Why go solar? Solar is better than ever. Our revolutionary design and inverter equipment with the latest in solar panel technology for the ultimate in-home and business security. That's right, I said security. Grid security and security of your home are linked. Fortify your future today with a battery backup system. No maintenance, quiet running. Did you know in Manitoba, grid-connected, off-grid, and battery backup systems are 100% right off in the year you purchase for any company or farm? Do you want to back up your internet, keep your tills running, and the lights on? We can install a system that is right for you, with battery backup fully capable of taking on all those essential loads and keeping you running. When you call our experts at Evolve Green, ask about getting your free energy audit today. Call or email today to find out what system works best for you. 1-866-5-EVOLVE or support at evolvegreen.ca. Also, be sure to check out our website at www.evolvegreen.ca. Welcome back to Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. Uh, Ferdy Nelson joined the show here first off to talk about the West Regional uh, Best of Three series that will be uh, going, well, will be underway tomorrow night, finally, between the Notre Dame Hounds and the Westman Wildcats at Hartney Community Center. Uh, puck drop in at 7 30 p.m. tomorrow. So you won't want to miss it if you uh, have an opportunity to go to that game if you are in the Hartney Community Center area. But welcome back to the show, everybody. It's uh, time now to, to talk to uh, a player from an academy I haven't talked to in a very long time here on the show uh, from Pilot Mount Hockey Academy. And Devana Ditto. Devana, great to have you on the show. I'm sure uh, you're feeling very excited. I mean, it's been a while since you've made the commitment to Midland now back on April 6th, but I mean, just letting it all soak in since then. Uh, what, what's it like knowing you'll be a warrior a hockey player next season? Um, it is definitely very, very exciting. Um, I'm very excited to start a new beginning. Um, definitely somewhere new. Um, it's definitely a relief <laughs> um, off my shoulders. A lot of stress is gone ever since I made my commitment especially being in grade 12. Um, it's definitely a big stressor for a lot of players. So it's um, definitely a very good feeling to have, knowing that I have a place to go next year and um, a very promising team and an amazing coach to go to. And we'll dive into the the team, the coach, in uh, a little bit here throughout this interview. But, of course, you commit to Midland University to play Warriors hockey for the 2022-2023 season. You'll be playing Division One hockey in the ACHA Women's Division I uh, Conference. Just talk about that. I mean, how special it is for yourself to not only make a commitment to play at that next level, but also playing at one of the highest levels possible, playing D1 hockey. 
Um, it is um, a great opportunity um, that I'm very, very thankful to have. Um, not a lot of people um, get that opportunity. Um, personally, I'm very, very excited um, and thankful that Jason White, my new coach, has given me the opportunity to play um, hockey like that and play on one of the top teams um, in that division. You'll also be studying psychology throughout your time there. Just go into what came down to that decision for you to pursue something in psychology. Um, initially, I wanted to go into nursing, um, and then I changed my mind coming into this year that I wanted to go into psychology. Um, my plan after I graduate um, from Midland is to come back to Alberta and go into a master's program. Um, and either start studying in the field of type 1 diabetic therapy um, or go into abnormal um, behavior. Wow, so some uh, pretty big plans for you down the line. It'll be awesome to see uh, if those plans are able to, to come true and you're, you're able to you know pursue what you want later on down the line. But uh, getting back into the commitment process uh, for Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, just speak about what their support has been like throughout this whole process and how they, they helped you get to this point. Um, definitely, I guess, through the training, um, through the years. Um, I did um, all of my talking with um, Midland. I actually uh, reached out to the coach um, and we <laughs> did most of the talking. Um, they have got a, quite a few congratulations for my commitment. Um, awesome. Most of it's definitely just kind of come with being in the league, um, being on a team in the CSSHL. Um, it prepares you a lot for going into university hockey, especially with living away from home. Um, you get that uh, feel of what it's going to be like going into university. So it's not as big of an, of, um, an adjustment for somebody like me compared to other girls. For sure. For sure, for sure. And, uh, you know, in terms of Jason White, he had a lot of praise for you. Uh, you guys can check out uh, what he had to say. I'm not going to say the, the whole the whole uh, quote here because it's quite a uh, it's quite a mouthful. But MidlandAthletics.com is where you can see the full press release of Devano's commitment. But for uh, you to get an opportunity to play for Jason White, a head coach that's come in and turn this program into one of the fastest growing programs in the country. Um, a team that just made it to a national championship this year and came up short. Um, your excitement of getting to join not only a promising program, but joining a coach that seems like he gets the best out of his players. Um, yeah, I'm super excited about that. He's an amazing guy. We've had many conversations. Um, I knew from the first time that I talked to him that he was an amazing coach and he was somebody that I want to be coached by. He definitely pushes his players and expects excellence, but also he's a very supportive coach, which I think is an amazing thing to have, go, especially going into university. Um, this is his only job. He's not putting girls out to um, further things. Um, so this is his whole entire life is doing this and um, talking to some of the other girls that are already on the team. Um, they love it and they think he's an amazing guy. Um, and even my dad, you know, sending your kid off to a different country to play hockey and go to school. He's had some pretty good conversations with him as well. And he feels very comfortable with me going there. Um, and he really likes him too. Well, if dad's happy, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> I mean, for, uh, you know, you to, to get to play with a new group of girls, right? Uh, how outside are you for that? new um journey you're going to be taking of not only getting to play with a new team but also getting to to know these girls on the team um i'm definitely very excited i mean obviously a little bit nervous um but i think that kind of comes with it as well um no i'm really excited to go to a new place and meet um you know 18 other new girls um i think it's going to be definitely a new experience, um, very different atmosphere, which I'm very excited for. Um, I've already talked to a few of the girls on my team and they're amazing people. And I've talked to some of the freshmen coming in this upcoming season and they're just as um, 
good people as anybody else. I think they're going to be amazing hockey players and everybody kind of has a mindset going into it that you're there to win a championship. Um, it's a group effort and everybody wants to be there, which I think is something that a lot of girls look for whenever they're going on to teams. And I'm excited to go somewhere where everybody wants to be there. Everybody wants to strive for one goal. How huge is that? Just getting some familiarity with who some of your teammates are, who some of your teammates are going to be. I mean, making the, the process. I mean, you talk about how it's a bit nerve wracking joining a new group, but I'm sure with them reaching out to you, um, vice versa, you reaching out to them, it's made the, the process of those nerves maybe being a bit less. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, hearing from a lot of the girls, um, I've heard from a lot of them. Um, it's definitely making the transition a lot easier. You feel a lot more comfortable going into it that you're not just kind of going in blind. You know, some of the girls, there'll be some familiar So be as nerve wracking. You know, uh, like you said, you're going to be joining a program that has been improving throughout the years, uh, a team that just went to a national championship and lost to uh, Liberty University. But uh, just for yourself to, to know that you're joining a, a program that's most likely going to continue to to get better under the direction of Jason White, just that, that excitement of, of being a part of something that could continue to keep growing. Um, yeah, I'm definitely very excited for that. Um, I think it's a great opportunity and it's something that I'm very thankful for that I get to join and um, continue on help building the program and potentially getting to that national championship title. You know, you'll be moving to Fremont, Nebraska. Um, of course, you, you've moved away from home in uh, the past few years to play in Palatinon, Manitoba. But just with those experiences of moving away from home, do you think that that might make the transition? Well, I assume it will make, make that transition uh, easier of just locating to a new place. Um, definitely. Um, I think it makes the transition um, a lot easier. I moved away from home in grade nine, so I'm quite familiar with, you know, not getting home very often, especially with coming to Manitoba. It's a 12 hour drive, so <laughs> you don't get to go home just for an odd weekend here and there. So it definitely makes the transition going to university a lot easier. Got to ask you what you're most excited uh, to experience out there in, in Fremont, Nebraska. Um. I'm probably most excited just to experience the hockey. Um, I know it's cold down there, so at least I'll be used to the cold. Um, but no, I'm very excited to experience the hockey and potentially going to play for a championship title. Um, that's something that, you know, every kid has always dreamed of doing in hockey. So um, I'm just thankful to even get the opportunity to go play university hockey um and get my degree and then start um i guess building my life beyond that point yeah and just in terms of the the hockey side of things like like you said obviously a championship wouldn't be nice to win um you know down down the line here with midland but in terms of yourself from the personal standpoint as a hockey player continuing to grow her skills what are the things you're looking to to take out of the most from this program in terms of continuing to develop as a hockey player throughout your years here uh, coming up at midland university um i talked a lot with um a new coach, Jason White, about it. Um, he said that his biggest thing is just wanting to help me mature as a player. Um, you know, taking that time to really see the ice, make those plays, um, and definitely being smart. And um, he likes the fact that I'm an offensive defenseman. So, you know, jumping up into the play, he loves whenever his defensemen do it. Um, so it just kind of gives like the green light for everybody to be joining in the plays, um, which I'm very excited for. And I'm excited to develop as a player there with um, my skating skills and tactical things. Um, but yeah. Well, right on. You'll have a lot of time to 
to grow and uh, improve throughout your years here with Midland University under the uh, coaching of Jason White, uh, as well as playing alongside your teammates coming up here in the, the foreseeable future. But Devanna, thanks for taking the time out of your Thursday night and taking the time to talk about your commitment to Midland University. Best of luck in your future endeavors and uh, can't wait to talk to you once you're on that team uh, once again in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Take care, Devanna. And Devanna Ditto on this edition of Coffee with Graham. Uh, great to see her moving on to the next level to play Division One hockey at the University or Midland University to play Warriors hockey in the ACHA Women's Division I um, hockey conference. I, I never really know how to, to – there's a lot of words there to pronounce. But, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's great that Devan is excited for her opportunity, and like I said, I, I wish her nothing but the best in her future endeavors there at, at Midland University. So coming up after this next commercial break, we're going to be talking about some AAA boys hockey. Uh, Brandon Weeking's AAA U18 head coach, Curtis Brolin, will be joining the show as the last guest here on tonight's edition of Coffee with Graham to talk about just the, the finals, the, the playoffs for the Brandon Weeking's uh, to this point, they are in a best of five finals right now against the Winnipeg Wild. They were up two to nothing on the Wild in that series before the Wild took games three and four. Uh, so, yeah, much to talk about with Mr. Curtis Brolin, head coach of the Brandon Weekings AAA U18 hockey team here. Coming up next on Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. Stick around for more after these commercial breaks after these commercials on this commercial break. coach of the Brandon Wee Kings uh, AAA U18 hockey team in the Manitoba U18 or Manitoba AAA U18 hockey league. It's Curtis Brolin. Curtis, thanks for taking the time uh, and joining the show on this Thursday night. Big game five ahead uh, coming up on Saturday, two days from now. Uh, how, how's the team feeling going into that all-important final game of the season, game five against the Winnipeg Wild? Yeah, we're feeling good. Had a good week here to, to kind of regroup things. Um, obviously a tough weekend last weekend and not what we were hoping for, but uh, good spirits in here in the locker room and then guys are excited and ready to go. Yeah, and just going into the first four games of this finals, of course, the series tied up at two apiece. You guys were able to win the first two games, six to five in OT and five to four in uh, the second game, uh, five to one loss in game three and a four to two loss in game number four. Just talk about the adjustments you felt that the Wild have made throughout this series to, to make it tough on you guys and coming back to tie it up at two apiece. Yeah, I'd say they clamped down on things quite a bit uh, the last two games. Um, First two, we're, we're kind of running gun, and that fits our style pretty well. we got a fairly offensive group, and uh, they like to play that way. Um, the Wild made some good adjustments for games three and, and four, um, clamped things up, made things difficult, and sat back a little bit. And then uh, we were pressing pressing the issue a bit too much and making mistakes, and that's what they wanted. They sat back and waited for us to make a mistake, and they took advantage of it. So um, they made some good adjustments, and, and we got to make some of our own here getting into Saturday night. You know, obviously, uh, these are the two top teams in the Manitoba AAA U18 Hockey League this season. Uh, matching up in the finals, of course, it's going down to the wire. But uh, talk about how these two teams matched up throughout the regular season heading into this final series. Yeah, it was uh, – you always know that the Wild are going to be a really good and really tough team to play against. Um, 
we split the the first time we met each other um we split i think we both won in overtime uh in november i believe it was and um then we didn't see him again till the the last two regular season games and end up playing for uh the regular season uh, top spot so uh, we were able to to steal one in, in winnipeg um the second last game of the year and then and then we grabbed uh our last game of the year at home against them and, and took the season series and were able to clinch first place. So uh, extremely talented team and hardworking team and always tough to play against. And it's been a great matchup. You know, you uh, talked about how in those first two games of this final series, it was uh, that run and gun type of type of game. Would you say that, of course, like you said, that this kind of suits the way this team plays with this being such a high powered offensive of Brandon Weeking's team? Would you say that that type of style it was what led to some of the successes in those first two games in those close two games of the series? Yeah, for sure. Um, very talented group. I, I think. Uh, we got ourselves into trouble in three and four with pressing the issue too much. Um, I think we're able to take something, some of the stuff that they did in three and four and apply it to ourselves too and, and not press the issue as much and, and take advantage of the other team's mistakes. Um, like I said, talented group with, with some good speed and um, we don't have to always be pressing the issue and, and, and trying to create things. Every time we're on the ice or every time we have the puck, we can um, take, take advantage of, of chances that just happen to us naturally over playing a, a solid structure. We'll get more into this uh, game five coming up here later on in this interview, but let's go back to just uh, this team's regular season stats. We'll bring it up for the first time in this interview. 33, four and three record in the regular season, 227 goals for 118 against both ranking top two in the league in those categories. Uh, most goals for in the league, second least goals against. Uh, just talk about, you know, from just sitting back, watching this team, coaching this team night in and night out, What's made this group so special as they have been this season? Uh, their offensive power. It's been a lot of fun, to be honest, to be to be able to be behind the bench for these guys. Um, really talented group and, and a good close group that uh, I just love being here. And, and a lot of them that missed chances the last year and a half or whatever it was with the shutdowns. Um, it was just really exciting to be back at the rink. You don't in the this program the u18s you have a lot of turnover every year so you never really know what kind of what you're going to end up with uh outside of or after your camp i guess um just a just a fun group that likes to enjoy themselves and 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 has a lot of talent and, and a lot of drive and passion for the game how would you say that this roster this season uh especially with with just everything that that's been going down in the last two years with the COVID 19 pandemic canceling last season with this group of boys this year just talk about how this team compares to the the past teams you've coached here with brandon weekings triple a u18 group yeah it's a little unique um clark caswell you, you had him on the show um returned to us from from an academy program out west um, and that's a that's a huge boost to to a local team, um, and then a few other guys that maybe could have moved on, and, and if they had played last year, I'm sure they would have had that development and been ready for the next level. Um, opportunities like that where guys chose to um, stick around with their with their home team and get one one more year. Um, some overage guys, 17 year olds that um, kind of needed this year, but also were almost ready for the next. Um, that helps out big time. So. Um, just all in all, a really talented group. You know, you brought up Clark Caswell. I've had him on a guest of not this show, actually, but the prospect show. I've had uh, Braden Keeble on uh, Coffee with Graham as well. But for Clark Caswell, uh, one of the youngest players in the league, first round pick, sixth overall to the Swift Current Broncos in the WHL draft. Just to see a kid this young, this skill come in and do the things that he's done this season. Talk about how truly special it's been to, to watch Clark Caswell and do what he's been able to do this year. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty special. One of the best players I've seen uh, through this program. Um, just a guy that loves the game too, and he wants to wants to compete every day and get better every day. Um, he's on the ice, really really quiet, pretty reserved kid. Um, goes about his business and 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 truly a team guy. Not no selfishness to him at all, and um, loves to distribute the puck and loves to score goals himself. Just a pretty well rounded player and. Uh, we're really fortunate that he he chose to come back here this year, and and uh, I'm very fortunate I got to got to know him and work with him this year. 
This team defensively defensively this year, one of the best teams in the league, only 118 goals against, which was second least given up in the league. Just talk about how you found this team was able to have such success throughout the regular season and throughout the playoffs uh, up until the last, you know, I guess the series defensively uh, in terms of how, how this team has been able to have success on that side of the line. Yeah, start with our goaltenders there. Um, we weren't really sure what our goaltending situation was going to be like at the very start of the year. Um, both guys coming in, a couple smaller goalies that compete really hard. Um, Mason, who's taken the ball here in the playoffs, has done a tremendous job. And uh, Casey, uh, they split time throughout the season, and, and both gave us uh, reliable nights every time they went in there. Um, and then our D, we kind of figured was going to be a stronger point to our team at the very start of the year. Um, quite a few returning guys, only uh, two first-year guys back there. Um, and then a lot of big guys with the ability to move, um, play physical, have good sticks, um, and definitely a strong um, part of our game was our was our defense, um, and then their ability to jump in and contribute offensively too. Yeah, and just with how the game has been, you know, uh, evolving, it's been so vital to have that, you know, five man attack out there. How huge that that's truly been to see this defensive group not only jumping into the plays this season, but also having the confidence to do so. Yeah, for sure. There's some some big, tall, lanky guys too back there with uh, with good, powerful strides, and um, are making good first passes and and jumping into the play when the opportunities are there, um, and, and helping us out offensively. So, um, yeah, very happy with our defensive group this year. We'll uh, get back into the playoffs here. Uh, you mentioned Mason Lambro, uh, the or Lombro, the, the goaltender that has played all ten games so far for this team. The, the goaltender that you guys have been rolling with in, in all the games in the playoffs: a nine twenty three save percentage, two forty eight goals against average, and two sh shutouts in this playoffs with an eight and two record. What came down to the decision uh, at the start of the playoffs for uh, you guys to, to roll with Mason and uh, just throughout the playoffs as his performance with him being as hot as he is, you know, been able to allow him to stay in the net. Yeah. We kind of, kind of challenged both guys uh, that we're going to need somebody to, to take the ball and, and run with it here. They can't, uh, it, it's difficult to go, um, to go back and forth between goaltenders throughout the playoffs. You need kind of need somebody to get hot. And, and, and Mason definitely did that. He kind of, turned his game up right near the end to, to another level and, and was able to earn the nod of the number one job. And a um, few games at the end of the regular season, um, he played back to back and, and did a really good job. And then this playoffs, he's been, uh, he's been tremendous. Um, kind of gets a bad knack for his size, um, gets overlooked quite a bit, um, smaller guy, but he competes so hard and, and he's had such a good, um, good showing this playoffs for us. Uh, real happy for him and real proud of him and the battling he's done. As mentioned, this team eight and two in the playoffs, 26 goals against 49 goals for uh, the big guns stepping up in the playoffs like they did in the uh, regular season. Guys like no Nolan uh, Chasco, as well as Callum Hills, Clark Caswell, Braden Keeble, um, all, all top four and putting up goals this uh, playoffs for you guys. Just talk about how nice it's been to see those big guns continue to step up here in the uh, hardest time of the year to play in the playoffs. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, it definitely is the hardest time. They they led us all year, and they kind of kickstarted us right from uh, day one of camp when a few of those older guys returned. Um, and Chasco came back from a, a Western League camp. Um, you kind of knew that there were there was some pretty good top end talent there, and um, we needed them all year. They carried us all year, and and when things got tough here in the playoffs, they've they've done it again. So um, just great leaders in our in our dressing room, and then great uh, leaders on the ice as well. Let's uh, take it back to the first round of this playoffs uh, for this Brandon Wee Kings team, sweeping the Southwest Cougars in the first round. First two games, dominant performances on the scoreboard, uh, winning 5-1 to one and 4 to nothing in game two. Uh, but game number three, it got a bit tighter, 4-3 to three win in OT. Of course, you guys won that game to advance. But just talk about how nice that was at the time of having a, a closer game like that, being able to come away with the win heading into the next round where it might have been a bit tough. Yeah, it's it's obviously a little tough on the nerves and the heart to to have a close game like that, but it's it's great for the guys to um, not not go through the first round untested and, and understand what playoff hockey is like. That Southwest team um, is a young team that works extremely hard, and they did a great job of um, limiting our chances and, and trying to box us up quite a bit. Um, first two games, we were able to break through and, and get to them, and, and um, but they made things very difficult on us. 
And then in the third game, yeah, we're uh, on home ice trying to trying to finish out a series, and they're playing for their lives. So that's it's always the the hardest game to win is the yeah. the series clincher, and and they did a great job and, and took it to overtime, and we were fortunate enough to get a uh, uh, get a bounce and and uh, finish this first round off. Into the next round, this team swapped the Parkland Rangers in the semifinals. Eight to one win in game one, seven to three win in game number two, and seven to nothing win in game number three to advance to the finals. Uh, three dominant offensive performances in this series. Just talk about how this uh, Brandon Weekings team found another level compared to their first round series in that semifinals against Parkland. Yeah, it was a little different opponent than the first round. Um, Parkland. Is a little more offensive than than uh, Southwest was, and and uh, we were able to go, get off to a good start, missing a few guys in the lineup in our in our first game, and, and battled through that. Had a great start to the series. We went up there um, for game two, didn't have a very good start. They threw a great effort at us uh, in the first period. We found ourselves down. I think it was three nothing after the first period, uh, in in a tough rink to play in as well. Um, but the guys responded. Um, another great test for us, and they came back, um, battled back, and won that second game. And then, um, again, having the the experience from the first round where, where Southwest played so hard in, in game three, we knew that Parkland was going to do the same thing. Uh, the guys were ready to play uh, right from puck drop, kind of took the wind out of Parkland's sails right away, and, and we were able to close out um, the second round in three games. At the time, that sent you guys through to the finals, of course. We're four games into the finals, tied at – Two apiece, and now game number five, final game of the season, going Saturday night at J&G Homes Arena in Brandon. Like you said, uh, this team ha uh, handled the adversity well in that second game against Parkland, as well as in that game three to, to send you guys through to the, the next round to the semifinals against Southwest. Uh, this week, Kings team has only lost back-to-back -back only once this season before this series, coming back on February 4th and February 5th have yet to lose three in a row. So just uh, taking that into account, I guess got to look at that as an advantage for this team. Yeah, I'd like to, to keep that stat the same way, moving into Saturday night here. Um, like I said, we had a good good week here, uh, good talks with the guys, able to look look at ourselves, um, take a little break, take a step back, um, and just prepare um, for a great game Saturday night. Obviously, there, there's always going to be nerves. Uh, have you found there's been much nerves throughout the, this past week, or do you feel like the, this team feels pretty locked in and ready to go? Yeah, no, not not this week. I think there was a little bit. Uh, the first game, I don't think our game was very clean in, in game one. Um, you can see a little bit of it, and on both sides maybe. Um, both sides are a little amped up and excited to play. And then um, now everybody's settled in here. Uh, I'd say in game three, our guys were maybe a little bit too excited of, of the possibility of what could have been. And um, a tough Winnipeg team was able to to, to extend the series um, two more games. And then um, obviously Sunday night, um, tough rink to play in and, and um, tough night, tough place to, to win hockey games at any time, let alone uh, when they're playing for their lives. So um, they did a great job on, on Sunday. Um, and yeah, we had a great week off here. Um, the guys are ready. They, I think somebody said yesterday, is it Saturday yet? So, they're ready to go, ready to get this thing on the road. You uh, talked about how in those first two games it was more running gun in this series. The next two games in game three and game four, you talked about how the Wild sat back a bit more and uh, tightened up defensively, and you guys were, were costed a bit with just being a bit overly aggressive. So just taking those things into account, what type of game that fans should be expecting in attendance watching these two teams play on Saturday night between the Weekings and the Wild? I think it'll be a fast, fast-paced game. Um, maybe not as many chances as you've seen um, in the previous four. Um, both teams will be tightening things up. Um, I, I bet the puck, the guys will be moving fast. Puck will be moving around quick, um, and then be some some physical play for sure. Um, both teams not really wanting to make that big mistake, and 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 then at the same time still trying to find a way to get inside the other team and and get to the net and, and bury some chances on their own. So it should be should be a great game. Well, I'm sure the atmosphere throughout the playoffs at J&G Homes Arena in Brandon has been uh, electric throughout the playoffs. I'm sure it's going to be electric this uh, Saturday night as well. How uh, exciting is that knowing how uh, much of an atmosphere there might be in terms of how intense it might be in this final game of the year? Yeah, it's uh, we're, we did a great job in the regular season. We're able to clinch uh, first place and, and earn, earn this home ice advantage, and, and it's paying off here right now with uh, – 
us getting to host a big game Friday or Saturday night. Well, the big game, the Wild, the number two team in the league going up against the Brandon Wheat Kings, the, the team that this man coaches, and Curtis Brolin, head coach of the Brandon Wheat Kings, AAA U18, U18 league from the Manitoba AAA U18 Hockey League. Uh, best of luck to the team and uh, the, the coaching staff, along with yourself, Curtis, coming up this Saturday against the Winnipeg Wild, trying to bring home a, a championship again to the Brandon Wheat Kings AAA U18 team. Thanks for taking the time and joining the show today. I oh, appreciate it. Thanks, Graham. Thanks for having me. That was Curtis Brolin, head coach of the Brandon Weekings AAA U18 hockey team in the Manitoba AAA U18 Hockey League. It's not the Brandon Weekings AAA U18 Hockey League. It's the hockey team. I, I just, you know, realized after I said that that I, I, I got that wrong. But, yeah, a, a bit of mispronunciation there on my part, folks. But yeah, um, in terms of when they play, you guys have heard it all interview long with Curtis Brolin. Game number five, the final game of the series going on Saturday night, two days from now at 7.30 p.m. at j g Homes Arena in Brandon, Manitoba. Will it be the Brandon Wee Kings winning the championship at home or will it be the Winnipeg Wild looking to complete the three-game, com- the three-win comeback in this series? So... Let's take one more commercial break here on the show, everybody. Uh, once we come back, I will be ending off today's edition with of the episode. I'll be ending today's edition of this episode, tonight's edition of the show, with an edition of League Report, as well as some final words coming up on this commercial after this commercial break on this edition. Coffee with Graham on ASTV. Welcome back to Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions on this Thursday night, April 21st in 2022. We're winding down on this edition of Coffee with Graham. I'll have an edition of the League Report coming up for you guys. But before we get into that, if you missed the last interview I did in this episode, the most recent one with Curtis Brolin, head coach of the Brandon Wee Kings AAA U18 hockey team. Well, you can uh, check back and rewind. If you did miss that interview on our new media player on our website, amateursports.tv, as well as I've done two other interviews in today's up in tonight's episode with Ferdy Nelson talking about the West regional um, best of three series between the Westman Wildcats and Notre Dame Hounds, as well as the Benedito number six defenseman of the Pilot Mount Hockey Academy, female U18 prep Buffaloes. If you want to go back and watch that interview I did with Ferdy, or with Devanna, or with Curtis. Like I said, you can now rewind live broadcasts, live shows, anything that's live here on our new media player on amateursports.tv if you you missed what you might want to see in this episode. But yeah, um, Curtis Brolin just joined me on this episode to to talk about the Brandon Wee Kings upcoming game five, final game of the year, coming up this um, Saturday at J&G Homes Arena in Brandon, Manitoba. And speaking of them, I'm going to talk about them some more uh the Wee Kings and the Wild in tonight's edition of League Report. So we'll start off with that. Um talking about the Manitoba AAA U18 Hockey League. And I know I've already mentioned it before in this episode, uh, right before I went to break about the, the details of when that game will be played. But I, I think for the viewers that might be just tuning in, I, I think that'll uh, go into it again. So so you can see here. 
It is the Wild and Brandon. Brandon, the home team, the visitor, the Wild, they're set to go for 7.30 p.m. That's when the puck will drop for Game 5, final game of the season, no matter what, at j g Homes Arena in Brandon, Manitoba this Saturday night. Brandon, as mentioned, we're up 2 to nothing in this Best of 5 series, as you can so we take a look back to Friday, April 8th, the first game that was played here. Brandon ended up winning 6-5 to five in OT. Two days later from April 8th, 8th on April 10th, on a Sunday, Brandon went into Bell MTS Ice Flex and beat the Wild 5-4, to four, but there was a lot of time for the Wild to regroup and fight for their lives and for, for Brandon to, to think about potentially taking home the championship in that third game and going perfect in the postseason for themselves. But... It wasn't that way. It was actually the Winnipeg Wild coming out with an outstanding performance, five to one win on the scoreboard to cut the two to nothing series lead down to two to one at the time. And then last Sunday, another elimination game for the Wild, and they came through at home, winning four to two against the Brandon Wheat Kings AAA U18 team. So that's what's brought us to this game here. Uh, it's all on the line coming up. On Saturday night, two days from now, at J&G Homes Arena in Brandon, Manitoba at 7.30 p.m. And in terms of these teams in the regular season, we'll take a look at them one more time, as I've shown them many times here throughout League Report when covering this league. Uh, Brandon finishes the number one team in the league with 69 points, two more than the Winnipeg Wild. And in terms of the leaders here in the playoffs so far for these two teams... It's been Braden Keeble leading the way like he did offensively in the regular season into the playoffs, 19 points in 10 games, in 10 games played six goals, 13 assists to lead all players in points in the playoffs. And for the Winnipeg Wild, well, it's been Noah Ziver and uh, Logan Belton that have been leading the way for this team offensively. As you can see there, Brandon with uh, guys like Carter Dittmere and Clark Caswell there as well. So two very stacked teams offensively going at it tomorrow for one final time. Not sure where to find the goalie stats here on the website, but if you guys want to check out all the stats, all the scores, the schedule, anything to do with the Manitoba AAA U18 Hockey League, visit midget.ca. Well, there's uh, a lot of good hockey coming up this weekend, if we're talking in terms of female hockey, two games to be played at that. And um, there might be a third game that gets played depending on what happens in these first two games. But as you can see here on the MFHL's website, the road to the SO Cup for 2022, the West region uh, lineup of games. There's going to be three games played max since this is a best of three. Um, could only take two games, though, depending on which team uh, could potentially sweep. So Westman. The home team for all of these games, I believe, since they are uh, the, the team playing in their home rink. Um, of course, tomorrow night is the first game of this series. 7.30 p.m. puck drops in Hartney at Hartney Community Center between the Wildcats and the Notre Dame Hounds. Um, game two goes on April 23rd, so on Saturday at 5 p.m. And if there is a game three that needs to be played, that would go at 2 p.m. this Sunday. Um, in terms of these teams coming in, we'll, we'll talk about the Westman Wildcats here first up. And I mean, what a what a run for them in the postseason. Um, taking a look at the regular season, they finish as the third place team in the league with a 17, 8, and 2 record. Um, into the playoffs, I mean, this team was, was able to, to put together a phenomenal run. 9-1, and one, they ended up rallying off six straight to win the championship after dropping their only game of their playoffs to the um, Yellowhead Chiefs at the time. And since that loss, uh, Westman has been undefeated, uh, and they were undefeated since then in the playoffs. Um, in terms of looking at their score, their, their scores, their stats here, for the Westman Wildcats going into the postseason. Well, as Ferdy mentioned, uh, a very balanced team. You can see the goal scores there, how many players had goals. I mean, this has been the, the key to their success this season is having that very balanced lineup for Westman as well as playing with that speed. Grace Clever, you can see your playoff stats there. They were phenomenal. So, yeah, big performance in the playoffs for Westman, looking to step it up once again in this intense series as it should be against the uh, – 
Notre Dame Hounds from the Saskatchewan Female U18 AAA Hockey League. In terms of the Notre Dame Hounds, I mean, looking at their roster right here, this was in the regular season. You can see it here. We'll, we'll also actually go back to the Westman Wildcats in the regular season. And these are their stats there. But, yeah, taking a look at the um, Notre Dame Hounds team, I mean, this was their regular season stats. Ryan Parrott, Keanu McKibben, Kyra Anderson, all with 16 goals each leading the way. Caitlin Gilroy as well with 15 goals. You can see they're the two goaltenders with some outstanding records and some outstanding numbers as well, looking at the save percentage there, especially for Eva Filipova. But, yeah, looking at the playoffs, um, like me and Ferdy talked about, it was Parrott, Anderson, McKibben, and Gilroy as well coming through clutch for this team and putting up the bulk of the points. Of course, some other players contributing as well, but really the, the big guns for uh, this team right here, I, I think, goes with, with these four up front. Um, of course, defenseman Peyton Evans uh, having four assists in her playoffs as well. Taking a look at what she did in the regular season here quickly. 19 points in 27 games played. So some pretty solid numbers from the defenseman there. And it is her graduating year as well. So, yeah, um, for this Notre Dame, Hound team, Notre Dame Hounds team, like Ferdy said, might have an advantage on the experience side of things in terms of having 10 graduating players compared to Westman's, um, Westman's three but at the same time, none of these players have played in this situation before, so it should be very interesting. We'll show you guys the Notre Dame Hounds um, stats as well from the regular season. Once again, 24-2-2-2, two, two, and two, 78 points, 114 goals for 42 goals against. They finished the season with a four-game win streak heading into the playoffs. But yeah, um, also for the Westman Wildcats, we'll, we'll go into them um, for their stats. Before we move on here. And yeah, they, they put up, um, yeah, looking at it, 79 goals in the playoffs as well as only allowing 63 goals against. So a very good defensive team, a team with a lot of balance up front going up against a uh, very, very good skilled all around uh, Notre Dame Hounds team. It should be a lot of fun to, to see what happens, to see what goes down for all those in attendance for this Western region for this West regional best of three series coming up this weekend in Hartney, Manitoba at the Hartney community center. But let's dive into the Manitoba major junior hockey league now and talk about this game going on here tonight in Winnipeg, Manitoba at the Bell MTS Iceplex. It's game three of the best of seven MMJHL championship series between the St. James Junior Canucks and the Pemina Valley Twisters. And for Pemina Valley, they're one to nothing after the first period on MMJHL.ca. That is where the score is being shown, where I'm looking at it right now. So Pemina Valley looking to steal a win in... Uh, Winnipeg tonight against St. James, uh, putting the pressure on the number one seed potentially in the league if they are able to get the win with a game number four coming up on Saturday in Morris Multiplex. So very interesting to see what could happen in these two games here and what these teams will be looking like um, coming out of the weekend in this series. And one thing that I think is pretty cool, um, I saw this. Let's take a look. Where is it? Oh, yes. Yeah. So. For game number four that will be played in Morris, it's uh, quite a trek out here in um, Winnipeg, Manitoba to, to get to Morris. Uh, it's quite a drive. I, I know I have uh, I haven't made the drive personally, but been in the car for the car rides there. And yeah, it, it is quite a long ride. And to watch a junior hockey game, you know, sometimes it's 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 a bit uh, of, of an ask to, to get people to, to travel so far, depending on no matter what level of hockey it is, right, junior or minor hockey or, or whatever the case may be. But for junior Canucks fans, uh, there's going to be a junior Canucks fan bus put on by Fourth Line Pub and Grill. Uh, as you can see here on the website, get a ride to the Junior Canucks Game 4 Championship Finals. Um, you can reserve online or call 204-999-8910. Um, uh, his name is Tim. It's a $15 return uh, for the bus ride. So a $15 
fee for the bus ride, and uh, you must prepay via e-transfer to secure a spot. The bus will depart uh, at 5.20 p.m. sharp from the 4th Line Pub and Grill, and the bus returns from Morris Multiplex 15 minutes after the Canucks leave the ice. So if you want to get a ride to the game, if you want to watch the finals, uh, the game for the finals, but you don't have a ride there, or maybe you don't want to make the drive out the, the very long drive, depending on where you are here in the province. Well, give Tim a call at 204, uh, triple nine, uh, 89, 10 today. Um, if you want to reserve your spot online or, or call. So or if you want to call them, you can also reserve your spot online. But taking a look at uh, this series, how it's how it's been going so far in the finals. Um, of course, it was St. James winning game number one, five to four last Sunday. Um, there was a bit of a delay due to the snowstorm in terms of when game number two was going to be played. It was supposed to be played last Tuesday, but it ended up be, being played um, two days ago on this Tuesday this week. And yeah, um, of course, these two teams added again uh, tonight. And with Pemna Valley up one to nothing or in that game right now, we'll have updates for you guys on how these teams fared after their weekend uh, in their game tonight, of course, their game on Saturday as well. And as well as their game coming up on uh, Monday night as well for these two teams. So stay tuned for that on Tuesday morning's edition of Coffee with Graham next week on that edition of League Report, everybody. But yeah, th this is going to mark the end of tonight's edition of Coffee with Graham. Now I've been your host of Coffee with Graham, as always, Graham Forsyth. Happy to be back, as always, for another Thursday night edition of the show. Want to give a special thanks to Ferdy Nelson, Devanna Ditto, and Curtis Rowland for being the guests in tonight's edition of the show. And joining the show for, for interviews was great to talk to all three of them. Uh, also want to give a special thanks to you, the viewer, to you, the viewer for tuning in tonight and supporting the content that we're putting out here on ASTV, as well as to our sponsors in AETI, Case Financial Group, Evolve Green, Pilotman Hockey Academy, and Toby Hockey for sponsoring another edition of Coffee with Graham. Before I let you guys go, before I say my, my final, final words for this episode, just want to let you all know about uh, my mental health fundraiser that I've been running since February um, in support of the Canadian Mental Health Association and Scram's Mental Health Fundraiser. The link is down below in the description of this episode if you want to donate or share. Trying to raise uh, $1,000, that is the goal for the GoFundMe page by May 10th. It's currently at $237 raised. As always, I want to thank everyone that has donated, who has might have donated so far for donating. Your support means so much for me uh, or to me. I also want to uh, thank everyone that might have shared the link as well to friends and family. Be sure to share the link as well here, folks. Uh, tonight, if you have a chance with friends and family, want to get some more uh, eyes on this fundraiser to, to support uh, money for a great cause in mental health in the Canadian in the Canadian Mental Health Association. And hey, if you do donate, no matter if it's one or a hundred dollars, any amount counts. Any amount really does help. Going towards a really good cause. And of course, um, I, I want to mention, as always, that my views, my opinions in that fundraiser that were described in the description of the fundraiser are my views and my opinions only. They do not align with the views and opinions that ASTV Productions has on uh, Bell Media. But yeah, um, like I said, the fundraiser open on GoFundMe until May 10th. That's when it will be closing, trying to raise $1,000 for mental health. Um, if we don't raise that goal, like I said, want to thank everyone who did donate and did their part to, to raise money for this. I mean, to, to donate money for this great cause. But yeah, um, in terms of what else I got to talk about before I end off today's episode, tonight's episode. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, next edition of Coffee with Graham coming out next week on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. You can catch that edition of Coffee with Graham on our Facebook at ASTV Productions, on our Twitter at Amateur Sports TV, or on our website at AmateurSports.TV or ASTVProductions.com. Be sure to uh, check out the guest list as well for who will be joining that edition of Coffee with Graham on Tuesday morning, as we will be releasing the promo post 
for the guest list who will be joining that edition of the show on Monday night, uh, anytime just before uh, midnight, it will be released on our uh, Instagram at ASTV Productions, on our Facebook at ASTV Productions, as well as on our Twitter at Amateur Sports TV. Check out those three uh, social media platforms, whichever one you may be on. Uh, for the guest list that will be coming out for Tuesday morning's edition of Coffee with Graham coming up next week on Monday night. But until then, folks, until Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time for an all-new edition of Coffee with Graham, I've been your host once again of Coffee with Graham, Graham Forsyth, giving you the salute and the peace out on this Thursday night. Until Tuesday morning, folks, next week, have a wonderful rest of your Thursday tonight. Have a wonderful weekend as well. Stay safe out there. And... Until I see you all next time, next week, bright and early at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time for an all-new edition of Coffee with Graham. I'll say so long for now. Graham Forsyth from ASTV telling you to take care on this Thursday night. See everybody.